a long time I thought about uh, the way Jamaica is. I've been living in foreign for almost 15 years now. And all this time I've been thinking about moving back home. I know there are several factors that may hinder that decision. But I believe that I'm a public servant. And I want to represent the people of Jamaica. But if I were to go back to Jamaica and start a campaign for several political reforms, I wonder what it would sound like. My fellow Jamaicans, after 50 years of independence, this nation has faced several issues from increased crime rates to economical woes. This is due to the lack of political leadership this country desperately needs. The two-party system is an issue that contributes to the delay of policies or the lack of 21st century solutions to many of the country's problems. This country imports more than it exports. Therefore, it reduces the amount of revenues that flow through the economy from local businesses. This allows foreign companies to benefit from the hard work of our citizens and the tax revenues that are generated does not provide sufficient reduction of our deficit. These policies that were forced upon us by the IMF is an attempt to weaken our economy under the guise of financial support. Our leaders did not understand the impact this decision would have on the future generation. So today, we are faced with one of the highest deficit in our history. Currently, some of the politicians who agreed on these policies are still in office, making the same type of deals with no regards to the Jamaican people. This is a travesty, my people. We are allowing them to sell all of our natural resources and local industries to foreign bidders. We must stop them by implementing new political reform. Within the last 30 years, we have prime ministers serving more than 10 years in office. This must stop. A prime minister should be allowed only two terms. This will allow opportunities for more people to run for public office. We don't want the same ministers running our country under ill-fated policies for more than eight years. Under the leadership of PJ Patterson, we saw an increase in crime, imports, taxes, and a significant reduction in exports such as agriculture, backside, education, jobs, and social services. It is time we as Jamaicans stand up and say no more. It's been four years since we got together, but there's something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. I think we should break up. And trust me when I say it, it's not me, it's all you. When you were seeking my affection, you did everything right. You told me all the nicest things you think I really wanted to hear. You offer me curry goat wishes and oxtail dreams. Like everyone else, I took you back because I thought things would have been different. After four years, it doesn't look as if you know what you're doing. And what upsets me the most is that you made so many promises and you end up breaking all of them. Remember when you promised me that the GCT on my light bill would be rolled back? I'm still in shock. You promised me that you would break up the JPS monopoly. But then you filed an appeal against the Supreme Court ruling that the JPS exclusive license was invalid. You again promised to strengthen the OCG. But now you have them before the courts. You know how much it hurt me that the last administration had such a bloated cabinet, but the minute I decided to give you a chance, you make your cabinet even more bloated. And you reinstated the salary of the PM and MPs from the 10 to 15% pay cut the last administration took. Seriously, are you doing these things on purpose? And that Jeep, the thing should have been recalled before it left the factory. It doesn't even have a manual. Another deal breaker for me was the lights. Do you know what two weeks is? It's now been 208 weeks. Where is the renegotiated IMF deal that you confidently spoke about? Then you lie about there being a shortage of green material to complete the Jamaican flag at a civic event in Montego Bay. Then you lied and said there were no sticking points in the IMF negotiations. You lied, lied, and constantly lied. The other thing that cut me to the core was your spending. You seem to have no regards to the tight financial situation that we're in. Can you imagine my horror when I was scrolling through my Twitter account and see one of your ministers, a shell dung in a party in London? And then I read in the papers a few days later that the spending in London was a total of 140 million Jamaican dollars. 
What irks me the most is that you accuse me of being insecure when I ask to see the budget and receipts, all the while saying it was value for money. Your true colors continued to show with your arrogance and hypocrisy, telling me that bus fears will have to be increased, while you enjoy the luxury of 16 new IN SUVs. This after telling me that the cupboard is dry and we'll have to tighten our belts. You say all of that as our roads continue to be deplorable and we are left with no other options but to watch our salaries go right into vehicle maintenance even though we pay taxes. Speaking of taxes, how can you tax party? I just don't think we can continue this relationship. This financial and emotional abuse is just too much to bear. Is there really any hope for change? Look, I gave you another chance, thinking you really had changed for the better. But I see the old habits continue to dominate, and now I remember why I rejected you in the first place. So, I would like to officially say, my name is Jerome Hart, and I'm running for the office of the Prime Minister of Jamaica. I am running to change the hypocrisy and the idiocracy that is running in our political system. So Jamaicans, if you would like to see a change, vote for me.